first understand the slogan because there are many questions that come to me which are answered by Baba's slogan today. So Baba today tells us to make the atmosphere powerful with an attitude of remembrance is to do service with the mind. So Baba is defining service with the mind which in Hindi we call Mansa Seva. How do you serve others with the mind? So Baba is defining that, that to make the atmosphere powerful with an attitude of remembrance is to do service with the mind. Now you see that this service with the mind is a very popular concept you know and these days people who listen to BK classes they know that Baba talks about Mansa Seva and everybody is very interested in Mansa Seva also so what we need to understand today is what is Mansa Seva? What is Seva through the mind? Now usually we think that if somebody is in trouble, maybe they have a physical situation, they have a financial situation, there is an emotional situation with somebody, then you are trying to help them by sitting in silence and giving them positive energy yes so this is the normal way in which we think mansa seva is done so you sit and you give positive energy to that person now the thing is when you are sitting in remembrance of that person Yes, and obviously you are attached to that person because what makes you select their sorrow over others? So the whole world is in sorrow right now. But then what makes you select that this person deserves my Mansa Seva more than any other person in the world? <laughs> So that selection is based on attachment. Yes. And when you are in, in attachment, then you are yourself in very low energy. Because there are five vices, lust, anger, ego, attachment and greed. And when I myself am under the influence of attachment because that attachment is the basis of my selection of this soul as the recipient of my Mansa Seva. And when I am in attachment, then <coughs> I am not in my spiritual stage. I am in low consciousness because I am attacked by a vice. When the soul is under the influence of a vice, at that time the spiritual stage is very low. And when the, your spiritual stage is low, then do you know that even the person you think deserves Mansa Seva, they have a higher spiritual stage than you. <laughs> And then their sorrow starts flowing to you because the law is energy flows from high frequency to low. So even though they are in sorrow because you are in attachment, their energy starts flowing to you. And that's why instead of empowering them, you start feeling sorrowful. So 
Baba tells us that the first step to do Mansa Seva is detach. Yes, and when you are detached, you will never choose one over the other. Yes, so when you are in a detached state, when there is no attachment, then why would you prefer this soul over that for your Mansa Seva? <laughs> so when you are detached, you don't think about any soul. And when you are detached and you are in remembrance of Baba, so when you are in the self-awareness that I am a soul and I am Baba's, I belong to Baba, which is the truth. At that time, you are connected with the ocean. You are connected with the source. And when you are connected with the source, then you are like one with the source. So you are like in communion with Baba. And at that time, your state of remembrance is creating a very powerful atmosphere around you. Because you see that if you look at this word atmosphere, it is very interesting. Atma ka sphere. Yes, so you are the Atma and there is a sphere around you. So there is a whole range where your vibrations are affecting the atmosphere and then when you are in remembrance of Baba then in that state you are creating a very powerful atmosphere and the deeper the connection the wider the range so you know it you the atmosphere you create can be very very far reaching if, if you are in perfect connection with Baba, there is only one Baba and none other, then it is almost like your vibrations can affect the whole world. So the whole range which you can influence is limitless. And Baba says that when you are creating a powerful atmosphere, with this attitude of remembrance, then every soul in that atmosphere, present in that atmosphere, is benefiting out of it. Because again the law is, energy flows from higher frequency to lower. Yes, so, now the thing is, you see, Baba is the ocean, and anybody who connects with the man and buddhi with Baba can receive sustenance, love, power from Baba. But most people in the world are not connected. Yes, and Baba is non-physical. But I live in the physical dimension. Yes, I the soul am connected to the body, I am connected to the physical dimension. So, when I am sitting in this body and I am in communion with Baba, then I am creating an atmosphere here because Baba cannot do it directly. So, I am becoming a conduit. Yes, it's like a wire which is transmitting Baba's energy. And anybody who is you know, in and around that atmosphere, because we live in a physical world, we are all connected. We are all connected in this physical space. So every soul with which I share this space is receiving that vibration. So Baba says, and also, you know, the ones who are more attached to you are receiving it more. <laughs> so that way, that purpose is also served. Because obviously, you see, when you make halwa at home, your child eats it, eats it first. 
So when you create a powerful atmosphere, your child will receive it first also. But you must know the process to create that powerful atmosphere first. Because if you're thinking about the child, then you are not creating a powerful atmosphere. So in order to create a powerful atmosphere, you to stop thinking about the child and start thinking about yourself as a soul. And in that spiritual experience where you belong to Baba, you are the child of the ocean of light and might, you yourself elevate your stage a lot. And in that powerful atmosphere, everybody benefits. So Baba says, you must understand. So everybody understands that Mansa Seva is relevant. But mostly what we do is, we don't understand it. And therefore, we try thinking about those we want to serve. But if there is want, if there is attachment, then you are not serviceable. So serviceability means you are free from wants, free from attachment. Until you want, you are not serviceable. So when you are free from wants, free from attachments, when you experience yourself as a soul who is a full, full seed, yes, and that seed has natural divine connection with Baba, if you sit in that loving remembrance of Baba, it is then that you become an agent of empowerment, an agent of change. So Baba is very nicely explaining this in the slogan today. And I felt that this is one thing which we need to understand properly because I see so many people meditating and remembering their children and relatives and giving them positive vibrations and it's not reaching anybody <laughs> because that's not how it works. So this is something. And then in the blessing today, Baba is saying, may you be an intense effort maker who crosses mountains of problems with your flying stage. May you be an intense effort maker who crosses mountains of problems with your flying stage. Now, we must understand that we are all making effort. Yes. And what is the criteria for good effort? So, Baba is using the word intense effort, right? And in Hindi, it is called Tivra Purusharth. Tivra Purusharth. And if you really ask me, Tivra means fast. So, fast effort. What is fast effort? The effort that enables you to find solutions faster than the problems. Yes, because if the problem is, you know, more intense or faster than your ability to find solutions, then the problem will bog you down. And then what happens is, we stop. Now, in any journey, no journey is ever free from hurdles, obstacles. And have you seen that when people want to practice going on a race, they don't assume that the race would be smooth and the path would be smooth. They plant hurdles, they simulate that, you know, these are the hurdles which would be coming and they practice by simulating those hurdles and they practice that I'm going beyond the hurdles. So, hurdles are a part of every path and saying that I am making effort is not enough because 
if you think that just making effort is enough and no hurdle will come in your way and even if you're walking at snail speed you will reach and nobody will stop you that is being too naive so Baba says you must understand that on the spiritual path there will be hurdles and the hurdles will increase every day and what you have to understand is you have to make effort so much that your reserve capacity is built and when something comes unforeseen there is an obstacle then you already have the strength and the understanding and the capacity to cross it yes i'll give you one simple example in this regard so there was this um, sister and she used to come to the center for everyday class and then it so happened that she became a very important part of the center and she used to be very regular very diligent always available for seva so she was uh, she was loved by all and then one day she came and she told me didi you know that um, I cannot come from tomorrow so I said why so she said my mother-in-law is coming and I have a very bad relationship with my mother-in-law so it sends me chills and shivers to think that she is coming to stay with me after 13 years and I said what happened so tell me something in detail then she said that when I left home, when we separated, so that was 13 years back and uh, we had a bad fight and my mother-in-law and I never saw eye to eye after that. And until my father-in-law was alive, everything was okay. But now he died last month. So now she has to move in with us. And I find that this is something that I was never ready for. And I could never imagine living with her under the same roof again. And now that she's coming, I don't think that I can maintain any state of happiness or peace or <laughs> I can even, you know, uh, have a big heart and I can say, say that I'm welcoming her. I'm not able to do all of that. So, so I told her, what are you meditating for, uh, for all this time? So you've been here for three years now. And what have you done in those three years? She, so she said that, Didi, you know, I felt I was doing good enough. Like I was everyday problems, problems at work, problems in, at home. And everything was being well managed. And I never thought that this kind of a situation would just fall from the sky and onto my head and I never expected this. So I said, don't you know that Baba said, Baba has said that, you know, you have to be ready for the most unforeseen. We are getting ready for the scene of destruction. Then if you cannot handle one mother-in-law, how will you handle the scene of destruction? <laughs> Then she said, probably, you know, Didi, today I realized that I have been meditating, but I've been meditating in my comfort zone. I have not been meditating based on what Baba is saying. So I don't realize that, you know, this spiritual capacity building is so important because you always think that I don't need any reserve capacity. I need functional capacity but Baba says if you don't have reserve capacity if you have only functional capacity then if there is a uh, if there is a big problem then that can stop you and then you know all your capacity will get drained in one week in solving that problem and then you will be back to square one you know where you started so Baba says that 
I am telling you that the future holds many surprises and according to that you must meditate enough to be ready for everything unforeseen. And today Baba gives us a very good example. Baba says, you know, there are men, there are various types of children. There are children, children means souls, yes. So souls who are like crawling in their spiritual effort. So there is the crawling stage. There is the walking stage. There is the running stage. And then there is the flying stage. So there are souls which are in various degrees of their effort in these stages. Now if somebody is crawling, just imagine an ant crawling. Then what happens is, even if you put a finger in front of the ant, it's just a finger, not even the whole hand. Then the ant gets very confused where to go, which side to go, how to, you know, cross that finger. So if your effort is a crawling effort, then very little things will disturb you. Although you're making effort, but it's not even good enough to deal with little things. Then it's a walking effort then you know a little bigger thing can disturb you. When you are in a flying stage, what happens is even the biggest mountains below you are not able to disturb you. But then if you are flying at a certain height, if your flying capacity is until a certain height and then the mountain is bigger than that, then and you are not able to, you have not kept the reserve capacity to fly higher than the mountain at that time, then what happens is you will have an accident. <laughs> and Baba says, then you come crashing down. So Baba says, it is very important that you understand that you will not deal with only what you are dealing with forever. So maybe you are dealing with some things today but you must also understand that there will be other things to deal with in the future also. Bigger things, bigger issues. Just ask yourself one simple question. Ever since you were born, have the circumstances grown worse and worse or better or better? Ever since you were born, you know, people keep telling you that tomorrow everything will be all right, achhe din aayenge, or you know, tomorrow you know, after one year things will be okay. Just wait for better times, better situations. But have the situations become worse or better? They have only grown worse. Situations always grow worse. There is a downward slide in the world. So, have you seen the staircase picture? So, in that Siri Ka Chitra, we see that the world is going down. So, you must not expect better situations. Don't live in that false hope. So, Baba says that I am not scaring you by telling you that the situations will get worse. Baba says, forewarned is forearmed. So I'm telling you, this is knowledge that you will have to deal with more than you are dealing with today. Tomorrow will bring in many surprises. So just build your reserve capacity so much. Don't just meditate to, you know, be in that, uh, what do you say, that... Uh, tipping point where you think that okay my effort is matching my circumstances so if I have three obstacles I'm able to deal with them no meditate more than that build reserve capacity otherwise there'll be a mountain and even the one who is flying high will keep come crashing down so you should have the strength to elevate yourself when the time calls for it. Yes, so you must have, you must understand and this is what is Gyan. So preparing yourself, 
practicing detaching from the body practicing i am a soul and practicing this detachment where you can be an observer in the world and proactively you know create whatever you want instead of getting influenced by the situations this is something you have to practice practice being soul conscious practice experiencing all relationships love peace from baba filling your heart with those endowments so this is something that baba is telling us be an intense effort maker or fast effort maker fast effort maker means some uh, an effort maker who the situations cannot surprise you are able to be faster than the situation yes so this is what baba is saying and then in the murli today there is this song and i would like you to understand the song in hindi because it doesn't make too much sense in english so the song is mehfil mejal uthi shama parwane ke liye प्रीत बनी है दुनिया में मर जाने के लिए सो दिस इज अ सॉन्ग फ्रॉम द हिंदी मूवीज एंड बाबा सेज दैट वेन द फ्लेम इज इग्नाइटेड इन द गैदरिंग देन द मॉथ्स कम एंड द डाई ऑन द फ्लेम बिकॉज लव इज फॉर डाइंग ओके प्रीत बनी है दुनिया में मर जाने के लिए एंड व्हाट बाबा मीन्स इज हैव यू सीन दैट ड्यूरिंग दीपावली देर आर दिस ग्रीन कलर्ड इंसेक्ट्स एंड दे कीप होवरिंग अराउंड द फ्लेम एंड देन बिकॉज दे आर अट्रैक्टेड टू द फ्लेम एज सून एज यू लाइट द दिया दिस इंसेक्ट्स वुड कम एंड देन देर आर सम इंसेक्ट्स हु जस्ट कीप होवरिंग अराउंड द फ्लेम एंड दे गो अवे and then there's some who get attracted to it and burn themselves in it so they try to touch the flame and they die so love makes you die yes so now let's understand this do you uh, so the question today is do you fall in love or do you choose your love so there are people in the world who believe that you don't choose who you love you fall in love that is you get so you uh, so maybe you know you get attracted to somebody or you feel emotional about somebody or you just feel like you know this uh, this feeling they these emotions they draw you towards that person now you must understand one thing if you are drawn towards somebody that means you are not meeting them for the first time if you are drawn towards somebody that means you already know them you recognize that vibration that vibration looks familiar and that vibration is attracting you and when you know somebody from earlier that soul and you are connected from earlier then there is some unfinished business some karmic account in that relationship yes that is why that that emotional pull is there with that soul so whenever you are feeling emotional or feeling attracted in a relationship you must understand that there is a karmic account allowed there <laughs> so the karmic account alert you must listen to it and you must know that there is a karmic account alert and you have to tread into that because that usually happens but then the thing is you have to do that with understanding because you know all relationships start like this so uh, and i will give you a very simple example to understand it you get attracted towards an ice cream more when your throat is bad have you seen that so when your throat is bad it is winter you feel like having an ice cream 
which you don't feel like having in summers also. <laughs> because whenever you are feeling emotional, then it has, you are you're feeling attracted, then there is some karmic settlement which is calling you. And then what happens is, you fall for it very easily, but then you start realizing you made a mistake very soon. And this is why, as soon as people are falling in love, uh, they are taking no time to fall in love, and they are not taking any time to fall out of love either. So these days, if you look at the phenomena, people are falling out of love as, as, as soon as they are falling in love. <laughs> so as quickly as they are falling in love, they are also falling out of love. And I have seen many people, you know, who visited the center for the first time and they were holding hands and they were so much in love and then they stop coming for whatever reason and then two years later they come and one is crying and then the, and the other one is abusing the other one. So this is what is happening because you must understand that when you feel something, you know, you feel attracted, feel emotional, these feelings are an indication that you know the soul from your previous lives. And there is some unfinished business because of which you have come together again. If there is no unfinished business, you will not recognize, recognize that soul and they won't come to you again. So do you meet, so does somebody knock at your door once the business is finished? No. They come visit you again when there is unfinished business. So when you feel naturally attracted, naturally emotional, naturally attached to somebody, that means there is a karmic settlement. So that is not love. That is Maya's way of fooling us <laughs> and driving us into that karmic settlement. Okay. Now, then what is love? So love is the love is so you see that Baba Baba has given us the knowledge that every soul has seven qualities knowledge, purity, peace, love, happiness, bliss and power. So peace is a choice, happiness is a choice, love is a choice, everything is a choice. For who? For the knowledgeful and pure. For the knowledgeful and pure. So first, the quality of knowledge and purity comes. So when you look at the order of the seven virtues, it is knowledge, purity, peace, love, happiness, bliss and power. So when you have knowledge, when you have purity, then peace, love, happiness, bliss becomes a choice for you. And you choose well. And you choose well. And today Baba says that you should choose to love me. You should choose to love me because I'm giving you the knowledge that I am uh, your parent. I am the one who is going to provide you with everything. I am the one who is going to take you away from this world of sorrow to the world of happiness. So you see that we hear that God is the liberator, God is the guide, God is the creator of heaven. And Baba says, you are my children. Why are you suffering in hell? You have heard that India was in the golden age and India was made of gold. So Bharat Sone ki chiriya tha. And then why are you living in poverty today? So Baba says, I have explained to you the whole cycle how you the soul were 
at you know the peak of your peace happiness prosperity everything and then how these five vices came and then you started creating bad karma and then you started coming into settlement and then you started exacerbating that bad karma by not understanding this is settlement getting trapped in expectations and now i have come and it is time for you to reclaim your inheritance of heaven but baba says for that what you need to do is you need to break away your intellect your buddhi from this old world because until you are connected to this old world you are empowering it wherever attention goes energy flows so you are attached to the old world and you are making the old world worse and worse by thinking about it all day so what you must do is now you must understand that i am the one who is giving you the love of all relationships and the happiness of all attainments and by understanding that by imbibing that knowledge you choose to love me and when you choose to love me my love gives you the power to forget the old world while living in it so you can live in this whole world old old world but not as somebody who is expecting but somebody who is transforming it yes so right now the you are expecting from the world the world is disappointing you you are getting disappointed you are radiating that energy of disappointment so it is a vicious cycle going on and when you understand when you have the knowledge that the one who i should truly be in love with is baba because he is giving me the love of all relationships sustenance of all relationships baba is being the best father the best teacher best guide is he not being that he is doing everything for us baba says just apply your buddhi yes don't go by the heart apply your buddhi who is the one taking care of me who is the one providing me who is the one guiding me in these dark times and choose to love me and when your heart is in love with me then you will stop making the old world more miserable by this cycle of vicious cycle of expectation and disappointment and you will start this journey of making the world a better place by drawing in love and peace and energy from me and radiating into the old world so baba says love is a choice but for the knowledgeful so when you become knowledgeful choose wisely who to love and don't love is not an emotional subject love is a subject of choice love is a subject of wisdom just like peace is not circumstantial peace is a choice so when you are when you are in uh, you know when you understand when you have the knowledge and the wisdom that you are a peaceful soul child of the ocean of peace then you can choose to be peaceful whenever and however you want to be similarly love is a subject of choice and baba says when you understand that i am the one who belongs to you you are the one who belongs to me and you are in love with me then that love elevates you then you don't fall in love you rise in love and nobody should fall in love <laughs> so baba says love doesn't make you fall shouldn't make you fall but this false idea of love that you're carrying around is making you fall for 2500 years so stop that now okay so choose who to love and when you apply your sensibilities you will understand that the only one who deserves to be loved is baba and when you love baba you die from the old world and then when you die from the old world you get a new life 
because until you die from the old you cannot get the new so this is what baba is telling us in the murli today and i would request you to read the murli as many times as you can these are jewels of baba's wisdom and when you read it you know once twice thrice you get newer insights into it okay om shanti